In May 2011, U.S. President Barack Obama embarked on a tour of Europe. His trip took him to Ireland, Britain, France, and Poland. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome everybody to this presentation. It's often customary for heads of state to present visiting dignitaries with gifts to commemorate their visit, usually something related to their country's heritage. In Poland, Prime Minister Donald Tusk presented Obama with a copy of a newly released video game, The Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings, developed by CD Projekt, a small, relatively unknown game developer in Poland. In the years that followed, CD Projekt would ascend to unimaginable heights. But as Icarus taught us, you can only fly so high before getting burned by the sun. This is a brief history of the rise, fall, and ongoing redemption of CD Projekt. Poland, 1989. Communism has fallen. Under the communist regime, video games were difficult to come by. Because of this, classmates Mark Chinovinsky and Mikhail Kaczynski resorted to role-playing board games, one of their favorites being the original cyberpunk created in 1988 by American board game developer Mike Pondsmith. Pondsmith recalls licensing the game to the Polish market, saying, we'll sell five copies there. But as it turned out, those five customers would go on to start CD Projekt. Decades later, when Pondsmith met the team at CD Projekt, he asked them how they knew so much about his board game. The team replied, we had communism and we had cyberpunk. In the early 1990s, the CD-ROM revolution was in full force. Game developers were able to produce games with a level of sophistication never before seen. Marcin and Mikhail, now high school students, noticed that it was hard to buy many of these new CD-ROM video games in Poland and saw an opportunity to import and distribute these games themselves. They started small, importing a few discs at a time and selling them at local video game fairs. By the time they graduated high school in 1994, they had grown the business to the point of being able to run it full time. So they did, and they named it CD Project in reference to the distribution of CD-ROMs. In the wake of the dot-com bubble, their distribution business suffered. In 2002, with the dream of one day developing their own video game, they started the CD Projekt Red video game studio. The original distribution business was eventually divested in 2014. Upon forming their studio, CD Projekt approached a relatively unknown Polish author about making a video game based on his Witcher series of books. The books feature a nomadic monster slayer, Geralt of Rivia, who travels the land in search of his next monster contract. Sepkowski sold them the rights to make video games based on his books for less than $10,000, opting for a lump sum payment in lieu of a profit share. Naturally, given the success of the games, this was a big mistake. Sepkowski later sued CD Projekt for additional compensation, which the party settled in 2019. Though still fairly unknown on Wall Street, CD Projekt was once one of the largest video game publishers in the world, with a peak stock market value of 10 billion US dollars back in 2020. That year, the company turned a profit of nearly 300 million dollars on revenue of almost 550 million dollars, mainly driven by the December 2020 release of Cyberpunk 2077. CD Projekt's business is split between two segments, CD Projekt Red, their game development studio, and GOG.com, their PC video game distribution platform. CD Projekt Red's main focus is on the development of AAA single-player role-playing games within their two own franchise IPs, The Witcher and Cyberpunk. While a publisher like Activision Blizzard will push to release a new Call of Duty title every year, CD Projekt chooses to create games more infrequently but with longer life and sales cycles. Since 2007, CD Projekt Red has released six games, The Witcher, The Witcher 2, The Witcher 3, Thronebreaker, Gwent, and Cyberpunk 2077. 
Additionally, the company has released two expansion packs for Witcher 3 that, to the delight of fans, were nearly full-size games in their own right. The Witcher franchise in total has sold over 50 million copies, with over 30 million of those copies attributed to Witcher 3, which was released in 2015. Cyberpunk 2077, the company's newest IP which was launched in December 2020, sold over 13.7 million copies just in its first month. The game passed the 20 million mark in September 2022. The story-driven nature of their games, coupled with their high replay value, means that their titles sell well even years after release. And since the development costs of these older titles have been fully amortized at this point, incremental sales of these titles flow through the income statement at a nearly 100% profit margin. This allows City Project to consistently generate industry-leading margins which come well ahead of larger peers, even in years when they don't have any new game releases. CD Projekt's other segment, GOG.com, is less noteworthy. The platform sells a whole host of titles with a focus on retro, strategy, and single-player games. It's basically a Steam competitor, so I won't mention it more going forward. CD Projekt is led by a tenured management board, several being original founders, all with significant skin in the game. Altogether, management and their families own one-third of the entire company worth a combined total value of $1 billion. Yeah, those kids that used to sell CD-ROM games, they did pretty well for themselves. CD Projekt released their first Witcher game on PC in 2007. While the game featured deep lore and strong RPG mechanics, the graphics and combat system left a lot to be desired and the linear level design failed to keep some players engaged. While it was a good first attempt, there was much CD Projekt could improve. Notably, they wanted to design a non-linear RPG that would give players more choice to play through the game as they saw fit. To accomplish this, the company developed their own video game engine called Red Engine, designed specifically for this need. In the video game industry, game engines are valuable IP that have enhanced the reputations and valuations of the studios that create them. Electronic Arts has been a notable acquirer of studios running their own game engines, including DICE in 2006 and BioWare in 2007. Other players such as Valve and Epic have created their own engines that they license to external developers a very lucrative business for both companies. So it's not surprising that several unfounded rumors have popped up over the years that EA sought to acquire CD Projekt, rumors that CD Projekt denies. That dream will not have a happy ending for you. But CD Projekt's dream of a better Witcher title came to fruition in 2011 when they released Witcher 2. Thanks to the new Red Engine, this title was a large leap ahead of the first and well received by gamers on both PC and consoles. Witcher, so be it. Let us end this. But it was the 2015 release of The Witcher 3 that brought global recognition to the company. The game won hundreds of awards and was featured in thousands of publications around the world. Witcher 3 was so successful that CD Projekt's US revenue split for 2015 was equivalent to 3% of Poland's 2014 US exports. It's no wonder Donald Tusk saw such a bright future for the company. In August 2018, PC Gamer went as far as to rank Witcher 3 number one in its list of the top 100 PC games of all time. Although most investors may view CD Projekt as a video game developer, I believe they're more than that. They are first and foremost expert storytellers and world builders, but rather than books, TV, or cinema, their preferred medium of expression is 3D interactive entertainment. 
It's for this reason that CD Projekt's games have abnormally long sales lives. For players, there's just as much enjoyment in the story as there is in the gameplay. And this story-driven focus shows up in their financial results, with each consecutive Witcher game selling far more than its predecessor, yet also stabilizing at consecutively higher levels of sales in the years following release. Because CD Projekt is selling amazing stories rather than just games, the company has an opportunity to extend their two franchises, Witcher and Cyberpunk, beyond the AAA video game medium. In December 2019, The Witcher was adapted into a Netflix TV series starring Henry Cavill as Geralt. CD Projekt only owns the rights to make Witcher video games and physical merchandise, but the popularity of the games no doubt prompted the production of the TV show. Though CD Projekt doesn't financially benefit directly from the show, they did see a huge pop in Witcher game sales after the show's release. On Steam, The Witcher 3 peak concurrent player count in December 2019 surpassed the number of players that were around when the game launched in 2015. It's very rare for single player games to see increasing player counts over time. In 2013, Two years prior to the release of Witcher 3, CD Projekt debuted their first Cyberpunk 2077 teaser trailer. The company was still small at the time and didn't yet have global recognition from The Witcher 3, but existing fans were excited about the prospect of an open world RPG set in a dystopian sci-fi future. Years went by with no regular update on the game's progress, until E3 2018 when CD Projekt showed off a 48-minute demo of an early version of the game. Gamers were excited. But it was the following year at E3 2019 that CD Projekt broke the internet with a Cyberpunk 2077 trailer and live event that featured Keanu Reeves. The feeling of, of being there, of walking the streets of the future, is really going to be breathtaking. You're breathtaking. <laughs> You're breathtaking. You're all breathtaking. Hype for the game began to build. Gamers and investors alike expected the creators of The Witcher 3 to release a game that would be genre-defining, a game that would raise the bar for all other developers. In the days leading up to the release date, it was possibly the most hyped video game release of all time. After an eight-year wait and three delays, Cyberpunk 2077 finally released on December 10th, 2020. And oh boy, did it miss the mark. How does a game live up to the kind of impossible hype and expectations that Cyberpunk 2077 has generated over the years? The answer to that question is very simple. It doesn't. Unfinished crashes, bad audio, absolute disaster, glitches, buggy mess, bug issues, bugs, felt nauseated after playing, glitches, crashes, bugs, 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 a lot of visual bugs, virtually unplayable. CD Projekt Red, you motherfuckers, man, you're fucking assholes. The game was a buggy, unplayable mess. It was unable to run on last-gen consoles and was barely playable on next-gen consoles and many high-end PCs. The issues were so severe that Sony pulled the game from its digital PlayStation store on December 17th, preventing gamers from being able to download it from PlayStation directly. It didn't return to the digital store until six months later on June 21st, 2021. Management attributed the poor launch to having their attention spread too thin over too many platforms. Whereas Witcher 3 released on PC, Xbox One, and PS4, Cyberpunk 2077 released on those three platforms, plus Xbox Series S and X, PlayStation 5, and Google Stadia. However, it seems clear now that the real problem was an overambitious management team combined with poor planning and organization. Many core features highlighted in the 48-minute demo were removed from the launch version of the game, and several reports have since come out noting that key elements of the story were scrapped and rewritten after Keanu Reeves was signed on to the cast. Understandably, CD Projekt's stock got crushed in the aftermath of the release. Although the game sold 13.7 million copies in December 2020, an incredible result by any standard, expectations were much higher. Analysts expected the game to sell upward of 30 million copies in its first 12 months. 
It's been over two years since launch, and they have yet to hit this figure. Warren Buffett is often cited for his quotes on contrarian investing. Notably, many of his greatest investments over the years have been in otherwise good companies that just happen to hit rough patches. I think CD Projekt is a great company that just hit a rough patch. While the company certainly made a mistake with how they managed Cyberpunk's game development, they haven't forgotten how to make good games, tell good stories, and build enchanting worlds. There is precedent for botched game releases eventually making a comeback. One of the greatest examples is No Man's Sky. Released in 2016 to significant hype, the game was buggy and missing many promised core features. With No Man's Sky, I was expecting that next big leap. Except it f***ing leaped backwards, way the f*** back, like wh what happened? It didn't help that the developer's founder, Sean Murray, went on the late show with Stephen Colbert shortly before release to hype the game up. I'm dying to know the release date. I'm guessing it's fairly soon since you're on my show. <laughs> <laughs> Can you give us any idea of when that might be or is it still a secret? It's still a secret. I'm okay, afraid. great, all right. After the launch, Murray and his dev team got to work fixing the game and adding in all the missing promised features. Ratings of the game have since improved dramatically. Since the release of Cyberpunk, CD Projekt has been hard at work in their quest for redemption. The game has been brought up to a strong technical state, culminating in its next-gen release back in February 2022. Sentiment around the franchise has improved dramatically, thanks in part to the hit release of Cyberpunk Edge Runners on Netflix last September, and The Witcher 3 next-gen version was received enthusiastically the following December. But it's future content that will determine if CD Projekt's redemption is successful. For the Cyberpunk franchise, the company has two projects in the works. An expansion for Cyberpunk 2077 featuring Edris Elba, and an entire sequel codenamed Project Orion. For the Witcher franchise, the company has three projects in the works. First, a new AAA Witcher trilogy game codenamed Project Polaris. Second, a modern reimagining of the original 2007 Witcher game codenamed Project Canis Majoris, and a third game, speculated to be for mobile devices, codenamed Project Sirius. Finally, CD Projekt announced Project Hadar, a codename for a new standalone IP distinct from both The Witcher and Cyberpunk 2077 franchises. To get all of this done, CD Projekt announced they would be ditching their Red Engine and using Epic's Unreal Engine to develop their future titles. I believe this change was made in response to the technical struggles experienced while developing Cyberpunk and the relative ease of hiring Unreal Engine developers versus developers for their bespoke engine. Shortly after the release of Cyberpunk 2077, a colleague and I had the opportunity to speak with CD Projekt's CEO, Adam Kaczynski. We asked him how he envisioned CD Projekt would look in 10 plus years. He told us his vision was that CD Projekt would one day be home to intellectual property that would have as much cultural relevance as old superheroes like Batman. Should they succeed, the future will be bright for gamers.